another installment of HNN Overtime, the Hawaii News Now Sports Podcast. We are back in studio. I am Kyle Chenin, your resident sports reporter, joined as always with my partner in crime, Davis Pittner. We're back at it. We're back. We're back at it, Kyle. Took a little summer break, and we're back. You know it's, what's in the air? You know what's in the air, Kyle? What, what, what is in the air, my friend? <sighs> a little football. A little football? You know, a little football. What, it's just what, that time of the year. What month been, is it? Oh I've been my goodness. waiting for this. It's it's time, it's man. Such a long time. Obviously, I swear to God, two of our favorite, or both of our favorite, you know, time of years. We love football season. We love when yeah. the pads are on. Yep. And yep. Ooh, yep. is there? An, it's just excitement. It it's is. just excitement for us sports guys. For us who have played this sport oh for my goodness. all of our lives, like this is it. This, this is really it. And, and <laughs> it's you just know, Christmas. It's like like excitement. And you know, you know the thing is, it's like you're even more excited. I'm I'm even more excited this year, especially for the football team in town. Yep. Our yep. main ticket, the University of Hawaii football team, which is who we will be talking about today. The UH football team and under new management. Com- almost complete overhaul, yeah. right? You got head coach Timmy Chang coming home, the golden boy, right? He's coming home. Yep. And, you know, it was all that hype in the offseason of, like, what he's going to do. I mean, in the community, he's done a real good good things. We've seen it. We've talked about it on this show. We've seen, we've seen it on air. But now it's really all about football. And yeah. I cannot wait because this team excites me. I yep. love it. You know, you, you know, a good mystery movie. You love the mystery of it. <laughs> and it's so that. much fun to yeah. watch and, and watch them grow. And, you know, football, uh, their fall training camp is underway. They're in week yeah. two right now of camp. And it's just been exciting to watch. It's been, it's been fun to get out there. The wake-up call, I haven't yeah, felt that. Yeah, you've been getting there a little bit early, Kyle. I haven't had to wake, that up, wake up that early <laughs> since I was a football player when I had to go to practice in the yeah, morning. Yeah. But, like... Yeah, man. You know, early in the morning over um, at UH Mono, it's been super fun to watch and yeah. just kind of get a feel for this team, which is, you know, com- not completely di- uh, different, but you know, it's it's new. There's a lot of newcomers. Um, there's a lot of new faces. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's crazy because it's kind of like there's been all this hype for such a long time. About, right. You know, like what what is going to happen? Mm-hmm. What's you know what what is this team going to bring? What is Timmy going to do? Right. And it's like now we're here. It's, we're getting down to business now. Li- Camp has started. The countdown has begun, Kyle. Dude, we have a, <laughs> we like, have a month till kickoff, right? <laughs> August 27th against Vanderbilt, yeah. which again, you know, pe- people can make their jokes about Vanderbilt, right, in college football in the SEC, but they're still a Power 5 team coming here yeah. um, to Clarence T.C. Ching Complex to play the Bows to open. The, this is going to be the first college football game of the year, week zero. Yeah. The only game on TV, man. It's going to be fun, but... Back to the team itself, right? We yeah. were talking about all these newcomers. There was a record. We looked at the roster. Um, a record, not a record, but it was. It seemed like a record. 53 Dude. newcomers. That is the lot. equivalent, my friend, of a full regular season NFL roster. It's unbelievable. 53 new players. That's unbelievable. That weren't here last it, year. It's just crazy how it, this is like an entirely different it, team. It, it's like brand new, you know? It is. And we, the thing is, is like, you know, my, people might take it as a negative because obviously all the transfers and things at the end of the last season was kind of a, a damper. But there, there are ballers in this roster, man, and you just they're working on it now to find them. And and yeah, dude, it just just the the vibe around this team leading throughout the summer into camp, the vibe has been good. The energy has been high, and it's just exciting. Yeah, and I've been seeing. You know, I haven't been out there. I've been seeing your. Your footage and everything in the interviews, and those guys are going at it. They're going. You know, this, this pads on and everything. They are going live. Oh. They, this seems like it's full speed every play. They, you know? they, they have. They're moving so quick, man. Like that summer workout, whatever they did, it worked because they're flying out there. Both sides of the ball, right? They're moving. They're operating. They're still learning, right? The new defense and offense, but they're they're yep. flying. They're going, and it's been exciting to watch. I mean. I mean, I, I, just to compare it to last camp, it was it was night and day, dude. Yeah, I'm sure. No, and it, it's it was so cool to see them, and even you talk, uh, talking to Timmy and everything too. Right. Like his voice was a little hoarse. Like yeah, I could kind of sense he, that he, he, he was yelling. He was going all out too, you know. He was he yelling. Could feel the energy coming out, and you know, I mean, it's just so awesome. I think it's gonna be. He's such a great addition to this team. Oh, I, I mean, he's done a great job. You know, the whole staff. Recruiting wise, did a great job to bring in all these guys, and then you know just to bring the team together and you know 
they're they're ready to like show people you know it's not just talk right you talk about it all summer and now mm-hmm. they're putting in the work and yep. um something that timmy did that hasn't been seen here in a couple years but all the practices are actually open to the public like it's crazy there's no res- well okay one restriction when you're there no photography with your cell phone bring a camera things like that because obviously, you know, they're not going to reveal everything. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see stuff that you're not, they don't want you to get out. So, like, you know, no uh, photography or video um, from a spectator. I mean, even the media guys, we're only allowed to shoot certain periods of practice. Mm-hmm. So um, that's just for our eyes to see. Um, but yeah, um, all open to the public. He, uh, you know, he talks about it and wanting to invite the public to show what goes into the season, what. You know, he wants the boys to see the people and the people and, you know, vice versa. So, yeah, um, he yeah, he's just been really welcoming and inviting he and open. Such, yeah, such a part of the community. Right. It, that's the difference with this team. And yeah, having those open practices yeah. to, for the public and, you know, even the brotherhood and mm-hmm. even the sisterhood recently. Right. Yep. right? yep. Exactly. Uh, you know, just involving the community into UH mm-hmm. and kind of building up this program again right. and, you know, it, just it's trying to see what it can become this year exactly you know? and it's brand new and it, it, it is like, going to be fun and like we talk about the new players but at the same time just because there's new people on the team doesn't mean you know they can't play by committee they have so much depth now as sure. opposed to like last spring they were kind of like really thin um but now they have depth and that's mm-hmm. something you know coach timmy is you know hyped about he's excited to see the depth and the development of the entire roster from top to bottom so you know god forbid or you know just in case things move around they have the depth to do things and still you know operate how they want so yeah um you know here's uh a portion of a little bit of camp interviews with uh coach timmy chang on the depth of the roster Defensive line, offensive line is where it starts, and, and those guys are battling. Um, you know, I, we look a little different than what, what spring looked like on on the defensive side of the ball. You know, offense. There's some, you know, there's some veteran leadership there, and there's some guys that we want to get, keep getting reps um, outside on the perimeter with receivers and, and DBs. Um, you know, that's that's where a lot of the competition is really happening as well. You know, a lot of good guys with good speed, um, guys covering each other, guys trying to get off of coverage, get into open areas, and so. Um, it's just good overall work for the first four days. I think we just got to keep improving, keep getting better, keep working on our fundamentals, and so. Uh, you, you know what? They're, they're, the, the depth of the team overall is, is a little bit better. Um, some areas, you know, we're, we're really young, um, but I think the depth of the whole team, um, you know, it, you know, we're not we're not relying on just one guy to. to to be in a position, there's you know there's a guy backed up, there's another guy can, that can back up another guy, and so um, that that's that was pleasing to see. Uh, on and it's a, it's a credit to our staff and going out and and recruiting a bunch of these guys, uh, you know, through the year. All right, so that was Coach Timmy Chang, and we are back here with. I mean Kyle, but yeah, more I mean, yeah, that's me. I'm still here. More Hi, importantly, here. we have Sienna with Hi, us. Hi guys, thanks Sienna for having Pilotin, me. Oh my god, former <laughs> sports intern, now a full time employee at Hawaiian News now, yep. and she has yeah. been at a couple of UH practices with me yep. um, this camp, and you know, staying on the topic of um, the roster and things like that, we compiled at the beginning of camp some players we think people should keep their eye on. And some people we're keeping our eye on, you know, as camp goes along, you know, people that we think that are going to, you know, contribute and yep. just be playmakers and guys, right, yeah. that, that we could see playing on Saturdays. And um, I saw those lists. Yeah. Very different. I mean, you guys got some good picks in there. I mean, I like, yeah. I like where we're at. Um, okay. Very different. Yeah. Um, some would say I w- was a little bit more of like on the safe side if people Some were to say, say that. that but you know i think <laughs> I, <laughs> it's good lists but i like your the players you chose right um it's a little competitive here i, I mean, don't know I like mean, a, a the person sports outside you know, mean, sports. Like, looking at I you i like too, my list is, let's just okay keep it like all right that. all right and then <laughs> speaking of which let's let's start <laughs> yeah, talking let's about over. some of your some of your guys on your list 
Who do you have, Sienna, first? On, well, not first. There, this is in no particular order. Kay. It's just guys yes. that we think mm-hmm. are going to, you know, keep an eye on. All right. Let's so hear it. Just, whoever so, you got first. Well, just right off the bat, I went right for quarterbacks. I went for Joey Yellen. So he is a transfer. He came from Pitt. Previously to Pitt, he was at two other universities. Uh, AS, uh, Arizona State and, and USC. USC. So he's had experience in multiple locker rooms he's learned multiple offenses so i think that kind of like this whole quarterback battle is kind of been like the ongoing thing throughout all of spring camp it's kind of continuing into fall and i i just think that joey yellen has a good shot at taking that qb1 spot right and to counterpoint that (laughs) also on my list i have Braden Shager yes. and I you know I can totally agree with what Sienna's saying you know he has that veteran ship where he's been able to adapt and learn new schemes and programs and things like that but Braden Shager he is one of the you know the only quarterback from last year that got playing time that's returning right so he had you know this experience of the college level you know he's kind of the young gun right he's only a sophomore um, and you know he had a spring no offense to jo- Joey, but yeah. Joey uh, came here um, after spring. He was here for the summer. But Shager had a chance to actually experience, you know, uh, live reps with this new offense with Ian Shoemaker yeah. and company. So, you know, he is, you know, just that young gun that has that experience with this offense in spring, playing experience last year here at UH. So I think he's coming into this as the returner mindset, right? He has a shot to legitimately take the starting role. And, you know, I think it's just going to come down to, you know, maybe game week, right? Yeah. And they're just going to have to make a decision because, yep. I mean, from what we've seen, it's 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 fairly close. It is. Um, the, the, the QB competition is, is fairly close, and a lot of guys are starting to connect and starting to, you know, feel themselves and get, yeah. get a groove on this offense. As it is. I mean, it, that's a common thing. Right. I mean, we yeah. usually start off seeing two quarterbacks playing. I mean, right. when I was playing, we saw, you know, we had two quarterbacks going at it for the same starting position. Go. So. It's yeah. a, I mean, it's a thing that happens, and I mean, you guys both brought up really good points. Obvious research, right? That <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, even in that Timmy interview that you did, uh, I mean, he was just going over the leadership role. You know, mm-hmm. having that one guy who's able to take it all. So maybe it yeah. is the guy who is returning in a yeah, way, right, or right. you know, you never know. So. I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, that's what's in everyone's minds, yeah. right? Who's going to be QB one? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, it, it it's always bad. It's always sad to see you know players leave, but you know, I think fans have kind of t- taken that turn, and now they they're have. excited yeah. to see what's next and who's going to kind of take the reins at, at a lot of positions, right? And I think another position that we want to talk about too, staying on the offensive side, right, yeah. is, is running back. Another guy that did leave the the, the program was Day Day Hunter, mm-hmm. um, number zero. He was the the premier back last season, yep. um, and I think you know we both have we also both have running backs on our list, and you know I think they both have a good shot to either share the load or make big strides this season um, in sure. the backfield. So um you know ladies first <laughs> uh, Tylen Hines um so I don't know much about Tylen Hines but I added him to my list just because losing Day Day was a big loss but Day Day was hurt for a large portion of or a couple games last season and so I I definitely think Tylen will come in and take on that that RB1 role I don't think that they're going to rely just solely on him which helps his case um they're gonna probably do a running back by committee situation um but yeah I think I added him to my list mainly because he's unknown um I can't say that I know too much of his previous work because I don't but um I added him to my list just because I think he's someone we should watch for nice right and to go off of you know Tylen, uh, I believe we said he was he was a three-star recruit yes, right, coming out of high school yep. um from Texas so um, yeah, and, and I, I've, I've been to a couple more practices since mm-hmm. uh, we made this list, and he's, he's kind of been, you know, making his strides and stuff like that. But, again, I this is also why people think I went with the safe route because, <laughs> again, another returner for my running yeah. back is Dedrick Parson, who yeah. took, you know, the, you know, the brunt of the, of the runs when – um, Day Day was injured right for those couple games and he kind of presented himself as the workhorse and you know he's a bruiser like he he can do all the you know 
catches out the backfield screens like mm -hmm. that. He's fast and shifty, but he can deliver a hit and he can take the hit. He's a bruiser. And I think his mentality going into this camp, going into the season, is he wants to have a breakout season, right? He wants to be that premier yeah. guy. And, you know, he, he has a good shot at doing that. He just has to keep putting up a good camp. But, you know, down the line, they have a really solid group of running backs mm -hmm. this season. Um, so I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of guys um, toting the rock this season uh, yeah. for UH. Yeah. Obviously, running game is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. I think part of the reasons, I don't know, in my opinion, last season – uh, it didn't really seem like we had as much of a passing attack. It seemed like we were, right. you know, running the ball a lot. We were. <laughs> so yeah, we were. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, that, um, that was, I mean, that let's, was let's my just, view. We, so. we were, all three of us are at the UNLV game. Let's just, yeah, we were true. at the UNLV yeah. game together. That's true. Yes. Kyle and I have brought that up in the past. We, we and did. Yeah, you yeah. see it. Yeah. You joined it. Yeah, it was, yeah. That was an interesting game. I've said my piece many times about that. Right. Uh, so, I mean, it's... It's going to be interesting to see, you know, how our running game evolves mm -hmm. this year and it how will. we're able to combine the passing mm -hmm. attack with, right. with it. Yes, so. and it will be better for the running backs, the fact that they don't have to be the sole provider for the yep. team. Um, if we can use our tight ends and use a receiving core, that relieves some of the way, weighing off of them. I yeah, guess. that's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, we we we've had practices. We can confirm there has been a lot more passing yeah. <laughs> at this camp the than good. the last yeah. couple of years. But which is also always nice to see. It's always fun to yeah. see. And you know, you bring up tight ends. Speaking it's, of that, tight it's ends, it's kind of a an unknown, a kind of a forbidden position <laughs> group in this in these parts. Tight ends have not really right. been a thing here at UH. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But you know, the coaches and the players want to ensure this is not. A tight end that's solely for blocking, right? This, this is the yeah. modern day tight end. You're Jason, or not Jason Kelsey? That's his brother. You're, you're <laughs> Travis Kelsey. <laughs> Travis no Kelsey. No lineman. <laughs> you're, you're Travis Kelsey's, and and you're, and you're George Kittle's. Yes. So on your list, you have a another newcomer. Yeah. Um, and in a relatively new position for UH. Yes. Um, Jordan Murray. So I'm very excited overall with where the offense is trending towards. Um, and with our new offensive coordinator as well, who is very set on using tight ends as a receiver, not only as a blocker, because that's kind of what you need now. You need the bigger guys who can block when they need to, but also um, they have hands, they can receive. Um, and so I, I really am excited to see what Jordan Murray can do. I don't know much because he is a transfer. He just got here. Um, but I think him and Shoemaker – the OC will come up with some good schemes. And then you also have Kayla Phillips. So he's not going to be the only tight end for sure. Yeah. And I, I think tight ends are a matchup nightmare, right? When you put, it is. you put them out on the mm -hmm. slot and you match them up against like a, a smaller defensive back, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it just, it just creates nightmares for your, for the defense, you know, to try and keep up with them. And then like, if they're quick, like, I mean, Phillips and Murray both they're have some, speed to them they're so big dudes too. they're big yeah. and they have some speed so you put a linebacker out there they might not be able to cover so it's it's just a na matchup nightmare and it's fun to see an offense like really evolve um it seems really complex a lot of you know moving parts it is. right yeah. so so but in I, a good way yeah in a way that you don't want to be a one-dimensional mm -hmm. offense that's Absolutely. the worst thing you can be yeah and i think at, at the least that's what they're striving for and what that's what they're working towards yeah um I don't have a tight end on my list. Um, wow. I, I, mean, I thought you were going to say some <laughs> returning or, you know, some. I mean, you know. We, she, she mentioned Caleb Phillips, the returning tight end. He is a prototypical. I mean, Jordan Murray, all of our tight ends are like prototypical. They're, they all look like yes, the prototypical they tight are end. Tight ends. Yeah. yeah, they to are their core. to the core, <laughs> to the Literally. bone, to the bone. <laughs> to the bone. <laughs> and so my next my next offensive player is actually the last offensive player on my list. Um, okay. Dior Scott. And oh, yeah. this is a name that a lot of people know even before he got to UH, right? Yep. If you got a Netflix account, which not a lot of people have anymore, um, I will renew mine when Stranger Things Season 5 comes out. But right now, <laughs> Last Chance U Season 4 or 3, one of the... Oh, I can't remember what season he was on. Ones. Yeah, yeah. One, of the, one of the later ones. Yeah. He was a feature player on that season of Last Chance U over at Laney College. Um, in Oakland, and then he decided to walk on here at UH two years ago. Um, played a little bit as in, in his walk-on year, 
um, during the COVID season in 2020, mm -hmm. decided to redshirt last season, and now he's fully back. He's back at a more natural um, wide receiver position. They had He made the move to running back last season, which was, I mean, an experiment. You know, you got to see if it worked or not. And then he, he decided to redshirt. He got bigger. He got stronger. got a little quicker. And, you know, he... I think he's due. He, he's one of those guys I where agree. I think he's due for a breakout year to be a contributor to this team. And he, he's just one of those team guys. Sure. He, yeah. he's, he's just a, a spark plug guy, brings energy. You know, I've never seen Dior without a smile on his face at practice. That's true. He's always smiling. He's mm -hmm. always having a good time. And my boy is running some crispy routes out there. Really? Yeah, he, that's what I've heard. He, he, his route running has been really good this, this camp. Uh, making a lot of catches, and he's just having a good year. And, you know, yeah. he, he's out of the 25 uh, jersey number. He's in number nine. He's in a single digit. <laughs> and you all, you all know yeah. when you're in the single nine. digit, you, you move a little quicker. So that's what I, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but no, I, just, I just think yeah. he's, he's due. I think so, too. And, you know, I mean, obviously I watched him on Last Chance. That's how I first heard of him. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the thing I like about him is that I think even in Last Chance, he played different positions, if I remember right. right. Mm -hmm. And... I think that just carries on over here where he's able to adapt into mm -hmm. yes. kind of any role that he's put in, which, right. is, which makes him a great player it and does. a great asset for the bows yeah. and everything. And I think you're right. I mean, taking that redshirt year, I mean, he now I think he's just ready, you know? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think it's about time for him to step up, and I think he is going to step up. I think he's going to be a great weapon for this offense and you know this team that's still building yeah. today, right, right right he he's he's been having a good camp so far i think and i like it yeah yeah, yeah like that it. was someone that i wanted to steal from my list but yeah, yeah you took him i mean you already have another wide receiver so <laughs> talk all about right, who do we got, <laughs> who do we got? <laughs> this is good i like this you do yeah. <laughs> yeah all right who do we got so the next person on my list is zion bowens he is in his senior year so i expect this to be in lights out year for him right. in general. Um, I also think that the wide receiver room does need a leader. And the reason I put him on this list is not only for his talent, which we all know he has. I put him on the li this list because, I mean, this is he, this is his for taking. He's wide receiver one, mm -hmm. or he has mm -hmm. the potential to be. Right. Um, they need a leader in, in the locker room. And I think that's why I put him on my list, really, yeah. is just because I see him stepping up in a leadership role more than just showing up and making plays right and you know he he did have a he he had a, you know, a pretty late breakout last season he in did. the last couple yeah. games he 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 kind of had his breakout moment in yeah. the last three games but like like i agree with you he 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 is one of those guys where he's the senior wide receiver and he's gotta yeah. sort of take the reins of that he room does. and and, and uh, yeah, and he's a returnee, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it, it's time that they look to the returnees and the senior guys to kind of step up, and right. I, that's why I put him on this list. Really, like we know he has the talent. Mm -hmm. He is yeah. another guy that has been showing out, showing out at camp. Like at he, camp, yeah, he has been. No, I think it is too. I think these guys are just excited, maybe with the new plays or. You know, just kind of growing the passing attack. I mean, yeah. we were, we were yeah. just talking about that and I think, hopefully improving it. Yeah. But yeah. I think it I think it's time for these receivers to start seeing some action yeah. more. Yeah, right? that was what Kyle texted me like first thing yesterday morning is that like the wide receivers are just on a different planet. They're playing. And they're playing really well this week. I will say. Yeah, I'm, nice. I'm so happy for them. And they're yeah. they're getting that this new playbook. This is a new offense, but they seem to be transitioning very well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I think just from top to bottom of the top to bottom of the roster, you know, yeah. they just seem a lot more like energized mm -hmm. and ready to be out there. I mean, it obviously, you know, when wh whatever happened last year happened, and obviously there was just not a love, a lot of love for football or anything around the end of the season. But you know, going to camp, it's like everyone's energized. It's six o'clock in the morning. It's not supposed to be a time <laughs> where you're supposed to be wired, but. Yeah. They they were having a fun time. They're screaming and yelling and yeah. and yeah. I mean, they're just competing both sides of the ball, mm -hmm. and that is my what you like to hear. smooth transition. All right, who do we got, Kyle? <laughs> the other side of the ball. <laughs> it oh, is defense defensive time. Side. Yeah. Who do we got? I have a couple guys on my list, and it is two returners. But I will start um, in the middle in the linebacker position. We have Isaiah Tufunga. He is a local boy. He actually transferred. Um, a couple years ago yeah. from Oregon State, he returned home to play um, at UH. He was a kind of a rotation guy um, the last couple seasons, and I think he's just he's going to be that 
that linebacker, you know, the the quarterback of the defense, right? Yeah. Putting in the calls under another, you know, new defensive coordinator, but you know, Jacob Yoro, he's been the linebackers coach, a bunch of other position coaches here at UH for a couple seasons now, now taking the reins at DC. Um, but Tufunga, you know, he's he's ready to step up and be that that leader at the linebacker spot, especially, you know, losing a lot of guys in that position. Mm-hmm. You know, most notably, you know, you got to bring him up, Darius Musau, yeah. the leading tackler, things like yep. that. Yep. You know, when you lose a stud like that, it's, you know, you got to find a replacement. And I think Isaiah is stepping up to the plate. And, you know, he's another senior, right, another mm-hmm. returning mm-hmm. senior local boy. Yeah. And he's ready to lead that defense um, this season. And I, I think he's, 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 he's due for, for some – for some good plays. I think it's going to be so interesting to see though cuz that is such a big hole to fill, it is. right? Right. It's huge. So it it's kind of like how are they how's the defensive coordinator how how are we going to be able to replace that hole? Is it shifting into a different defense maybe or like kind of adapting to other players strengths mm-hmm. in a yeah. way? Or do you think he's going to be able to fill this role? I, I mean I don't know. It's <laughs> you know, I, I will yeah. say, like, as much as we were talking about the offense, the defense is flying, too. They are making plays. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. yeah, we noticed that last Saturday when they were playing at Clarence TC. Um, the defense looks great. They yeah. just do. Um, Mosau's a big loss. And, and we kind of talked about this before, mm-hmm. um, you know, at camp. Just kind of, like, Mosau was so – he was not a traditional linebacker. No, 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 no. Not at all. And so – I, I wonder what Isaiah is going to do. We yeah. obviously know he has the talent. He right. is a local boy, mm-hmm. um, but to to fill that role, uh, that's that's big. It is big, yeah. and and like yeah, like she was saying, Darius was like that in betweener guy, like kind of mm-hmm. just roaming the field, doing you know whatever you know, having his way with the offense, right? So yeah, yeah. that's how we made all those plays. But you know, we'll we'll see how to you know both coordinators have not given us a bona fide description of how they're running things yeah we're like oh how would you describe this offense and they give us like 15 different words to describe <laughs> it and you're just like well okay yeah. we'll go with it there will be an offense and a defensive plan come saturday august 27th but yes, exciting um it is. staying on the defensive side um you know i'll i'll uh, I'll, I'll wrap up mine because mine, yeah, yours mine's, mine's closer yeah. so yeah. staying in the in the trenches area in the in in the box uh you have uh an edge rusher who is another local boy um, he's a Kamehameha grad, um, Jonah Kaha, uh, excuse me, I will get it right, I, Jonah Kahavai Welsh, <laughs> um, he is a senior, um, he's been here for the long haul, he was a, a roller recruit, if I remember correctly, and he stuck it through these last couple years, um, you know, a little banged up with injury, so he didn't really see the field a lot, but I think this year he has really become that leader, that senior, right? Mm-hmm. The, the the elder statesman almost just like he's just been in this program forever and he is you know just that vocal guy calling up the defense calling the huddle things like that and right now he's having a really solid camp he's staying healthy he's you know making plays I saw him uh today at practice just blow a play up in the backfield and he's having a really good camp he's you know Doing a lot of good stuff off the field. Also, he's on the watch list for the Werfel Award, which is an award given to a college football player who is outstanding in community service in their communities and things like that. So, you know, he's also he's just really just become an ambassador for this team, especially when you know the Brotherhood movement and all that started. He's just kind of been that ambassador. Um, he he is the he's the leader when they do the haa, which is you mm-hmm. know their their uh, pregame. Uh, tradition now so you know obviously he's gained the respect yeah. of his team and I think he's just going to be just that solid consistent guy that uh will be yeah. um on the edge for them I like that yeah he's no. just, yeah he's a great he's a great, great guy. guy it's really. all about yeah. it's you know I mean we talk about the the depth of the team and yeah. you know all yeah. these guys coming in it really kind of falls on the sh- shoulders of you know these returners right and yes. These people to step up, you know, yeah. take the other guys under their wings, mm-hmm. show yeah. them the ropes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it is going to rely on him and, right. you know, a lot of the other seniors to kind of do this. Exactly. And, you know, it's it's, it's just going to be interesting to see, like, you know, now that they do have the depth, how are they going to use it? What are they going to yes. do? Um, yep. And, you know, who's going to step up? And, and like, you know, we, we talk about how many people left the offense, like the defense also was the diminished. Defense. You, you, yeah. you start to realize, you know, Darius is gone. Uh, Corey Bethley, who was another in-betweener guy and yeah. a lot of guys to graduation. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then, uh, our 
two, you know, our, our starting DBs mm -hmm. from last year. Yeah. Which brings us to uh, her, <laughs> Sienna's final, right, Sienna. final the transition. Le uh, member of the list. Right. And so speaking of Corey Bethley, I'm glad you brought him up. He is a transfer now. He's at Arizona State. And so I think that the DB room had so much talent last year. Mm -hmm. And it has so much talent this year. They just need a leader. They right. really just need one guy to look to. And I chose Hugh Nelson, the second, yep, to, go. on my list because I really think he can fill that role. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen it last year. He has the talent, but they need someone to look towards. And this is kind of the same thing that I said about Zion Bowens is that because that they, they're returnees, they're going to – be the guys that yeah. everyone else looks towards exactly. and so they have the talent now they can just be leaders and i think b based on like we've talked to hugh he, he mm -hmm. speaks very well and he he knows the defense inside and out so i think he can be that guy for a lot of these new guys right and you know you know, talking to these players, you know, there there's the obviously, you know, they're still like learning and stuff, but you know, they're excited. They're they're they ready. Are. Yeah. And you know, as And we're excited. We are. And, and as camp excited. goes along, yeah. you're just seeing these guys kind of rise to the top and 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 then, you know, other people making a name for themselves and it's just exciting. Mm -hmm. It's just exciting it to exciting. watch and, and be a part of. I think we had some really good insight on I the team. That. Um, I like that. That was cool. Yeah. But now, thank you again for joining Thanks us, for making me. your debut oh, as no. a full time employee oh. here this at HNN. Awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> but speaking of insight, we'd love to learn a little bit about you, Sienna. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you kind of ended up here at HNN. Obviously, you have a little bit yep. of history with this place, but yes, yeah. fill us in. Okay, I'd love to fill you guys in. So, I'm from Maui. I am born and raised there. My mom is from Oahu, but my dad is from Maui. Um, I, I don't know. I have two <laughs> degrees from UNLV. I got my bachelor's in international business and then my master's in journalism and media studies. Go Rebs. Big rebel guy. Go Big Rebs. Rebs. <laughs> Big rebel. <laughs> <laughs> the pineapple trophy. The pineapple trophy. We'll get um, it back. We'll get it back. We will. Way. Yeah. Um, what else is... Oh, I interned at Hawaii News Now last summer. I was actually Kyle's intern. And it was... How it did was you an, survive that? No, it was no an clue. awesome time. We no had clue. so much fun. And it was such a great learning experience. And that really was like my turn of like, oh, I, I think I want to do this. And so... Um, once I knew I was kind of graduating this year, I started like reaching out to Hawaii News Now, trying to see if there were any jobs op open, and it, it kind of just happened like really quickly. I remember I got the call from one of our managers on the day that I graduated f with my master's, and um, I, like three weeks later, I was on a plane and I moved here, and now yeah it's so it's so crazy being here um but I, I mean i'm so excited to be here and now that football season's coming around it's like my favorite time of year so right. i wanted to ask too what yeah. what's kind of started your love for sports or how did you get into this good question so um i played volleyball for most of my life so that was kind of my sports that i like what was your position again oh my god i was a setter she so was a setter yeah i was a setter, setter. so yeah i played Weren't volleyball you I was opposite. You were opposite. Oh, High okay. I, I would sorry, hit I'm sorry. opposite sometimes. Is an opposite. I would hit opposite sometimes, which volleyball. I didn't like. <laughs> I didn't like because then you have to block the outside hitter on the other side. Sure. Anyway, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, have you seen him? No, that's but I never. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I played volleyball for most of my life. So that was kind of like the sport that I chose. And then my dad's a big sports guy, so he watches basically everything and. Um, we would just that's how we spend our free time is like every sunday morning we'd be watching football for hours from the first game to the last game thursday nights we'd come home early monday nights um and so sports were just kind of a part of my blood and my family loves it um i'm a chiefs fan we were about to ask i, I already knew the answer that. but yeah. i need the, I, I need the public to know I've, i need the public to know yeah the public Swear should know entire family I, yeah oh. we're all chiefs fans oh, i've no. been to a couple of chiefs games but i've only been to one in kansas city and i At went arrowhead. Mm. to arrowhead with lynn kawano oh god <laughs> fun fact fun everyone fact. too fun uh, fact. her aunt is the lynn kawano of 
of the other side of paradise. The other side of paradise. Hold on, switch the boards real quick. <laughs> the both on podcast. And I know. That's look right. at them. I actually have to work on our next episode, so <laughs> you know, but look at that. Yeah, it's a so family I, business that's here. A family fun business. Yeah, that's a fun, fun fact. fact. Also, fun fact, she made her a Chiefs fan for some reason, and now they're just... Yeah. They, I, they can never let it go. We just see the Chiefs hat no, that's on the true. desk. It's just... Um, I Yeah, I actually became like a Chiefs fan as a joke. And then... <sighs> no. What? <laughs> Explain <laughs> no, that. No, no, Explain like, that. Not, like as a joke to my dad. So this oh was like God. way back, like Jeff Fisher days. My dad is a Rams fan. Uh-huh. And so during the Jeff Fisher days, they were terrible. You know, they'd basically be seven and nine every season. And so I always <laughs> would tell him, like, I'm going to become a Chiefs fan just to joke around with him. And then one day I finally just sat down and started watching the Chiefs. And I became a fan. Like, ever since then, it wasn't only because of Lynn. Like, I genuinely love that team. And now it's her and I, her kids. We all love the Chiefs. What are you most excited for now that you are a full-time employee at H&N? I mean, I'm sure it's hit you. That, you know, probably when you touch foot on Oahu, but, you know, what are you most looking forward to now that you're a full part of the family? The family? The family. I think, <laughs> I think, I'm, I think I'm most excited to be part of the sports here in Hawaii. I think high school sports is just so much bigger than it is in any other state across the country, and I want to be a part of that. Um, I think the fact that University of Hawaii is the only big – D1 university we have in the state, it makes it kind of the state school, which it is. And both my parents graduated from there and most of my family did. So I'm a big Rainbow Warriors fan through and through. Um, and so I, I want to be a part of that. I think that's my thing that I'm most excited to is like now that sports is rolling around, I want to be a part of like any opportunity there is. Um, and I want to be there and I'm excited too. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. What's a ride, Kyle? That's, that's, it's like it's a proud moment here. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I, are you I, proud? You, I am you proud. taught her everything. All my, all my interns are doing very well right <laughs> that now. That is true. Which is very interns. surprising. <laughs> okay. There were a bunch of us. It was interns. three. It was three. Like Shout 50. out Michelle and Colt. Yeah. Yeah. Let's ride. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but no, thanks again for coming yep. on the thanks pod. Thanks for having me, guys. And you guys will sure hear, hear and see her on Many more, for sure, yep. episodes of H and N over time. Is that, is that, is that a, is that what I hear? A, a completed episode? I think that was it. Kyle. I think that was it. <laughs> I think that was it. In that case, well, thank you guys so much for listening and watching this episode of H and N over time. To listen to the rest of our catalog of podcasts, either this one or any of our H and N ones, you can head to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you get your podcasts. And be sure to check us out on the Hawaii News Now YouTube channel for the video version of this. See you next time. Aloha. <laughs>